don't know the reason for it. Personally, I don't foresee a problem with having building signage on all four sides of the building because you're not looking at it all at the same time. And plus we have size limitations for each elevation. So I would like to come in and amend the sign ordinance and just eliminate that requirement to provide a little bit more flexibility to these businesses because we're seeing buildings nowadays with that they're being divided up and it's no longer just one user, you're having multiple users. It's the same in the shopping centers. Every time we deal with someone like in the crossings or in a multi-tenant building, you have one tenant that gets the end unit and then you have another tenant that has the end unit. But if you have building signage on the front, the back, and the other side, they don't get to have it on their other side. So it's just for us to be have a little bit more flexibility. It's a real simple amendment. I just wanted to introduce it because I didn't want to turn into a huge amendment. <laughs> so that's all. So it'll increase business in the city, will it? It just gives them the ability to advertise the name of their business on their on their frontage or where they feel it's necessary for visibility. And it may increase business in the city, wouldn't it? Yeah, because if you're an unit that has a street side and maybe they can't have it because it's already been taken up on another side. Good. Well, now done. you're just talking about uh, signage on directly on the building mm -hmm. side, not a standalone. Sign. No, not a parcel ID sign. We're talking building signage. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, I like the idea that. Identity is very important, especially for these companies. Okay, I'll see what comes. Okay. Get rid of them all. No signs. No. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank you for sharing on that. Uh, discussion of citywide landscape renovation. Good morning. Good morning. We are here to uh, bring back to you. We. We've had money in the budget for landscape, uh, for the LMDs and CFPs for renovating the landscape, but primarily the grass, the parkway grass. The city no longer has median grass, which is a good thing, median grass is stuff in the middle of the parkway at the end. Parkway grass, as you know, has... You can just like a chair there. Parkway grass, as you know, has problems with both, from a both uh, a water efficiency standpoint, and it also encourages above ground tree roots. When you water four foot parkways, um, you get lots of tree roots that come up. So you can switch to the next slide. So we're, we're, we're going to be renovating about 5,000, I mean, 540,000 square feet of landscaping. We're gonna be putting in drip irrigation, obviously high efficiency drip, and then low water use plants, but very attractive plants. We'll get to the plants we're gonna be using. Obviously, reduced maintenance, it's much easier to maintain California-friendly landscaping than it is grass. Grass is the most expensive from the standpoint of, uh, from, from a contract standpoint, significantly more than plant materials, and significantly more than the new plant materials, California uh, water-friendly plant materials. They don't grow as fast, they don't require as much pruning, and they don't get woodsy like uh, a lot of the other stuff does. And we anticipate starting, we're, we're working on, we've worked on pre-qualification for the contractors, so we'll have uh, qualified contractors that do this on a regular basis on a large scale. It'll be most, uh, we're looking for one contractor. We may end up with two, but large contractors that just go through and take care of the whole thing in one fell swoop. I'll show you on the next slide. And then hopefully it'll be done, take the, we'll be taking the grass out, obviously, in the heat of the summer, and then we'll be putting it back by the, in, in the winter in the winter and putting the materials back in. This the slide shows you. Obviously we're gonna be all over town in a large, uh, large swatch of areas. The themes for this is gonna be, we'll show you on the following slides, but it's gonna be uh, very eclectic themes of, of California water friendly plant materials and it will have an impact all over town. But we've done demonstrations in many areas, masters and other areas throughout town on Foothill they look very attractive, they're very well received, and they have proven to be very uh, water friendly. This will net us about 6.4 million gallons in savings annually. So significant amounts of water. Along with the, uh, one of the largest greenhouse gases uh, uh, emissions is lawnmowers. And we'll be eliminating a lot of mowing of grass, plus the green waste reductions are significant here, because we have to now haul all green waste to special composting facilities, so there'll be significant reductions in green waste as well. Go to the next slide. 
And now we're just gonna go through a lot of themes. We didn't want a monocultural theme, you know, like grass is rolling everywhere, so we went with a lot of themes, and these will be placed throughout the community in different looks. So you'll have stuff from cobble and woodland. You can just flip to the next slide. Cobble and succulent, we, uh, we've uh, listened to a couple of our community members who'd like to see some more succulents in a few areas, and they, they have, uh, they're very attractive, and, and if, if done right, Move on to the next one, uh, DG and succulents. Uh, DG would be um, treated so it would be stable. It does, it's not the loose DG, it's, it has a polymer installed in it. It's stabilized and has uh, metal bordering usually to keep it in place, so it's very stable. Still allows uh, a place for, you, for the dog to uh, take care of business. Move on. <laughs> Grass themes, these are very popular, they're very attractive. Uh, uh, they grow well and they, and they require very little uh, uh, maintenance on them and they actually at different times of the year flower, at different, uh, different types of color flower, so very attractive. Keep going. This is a, a, a right there on Main and Magnolia, there's a large grass area. We're gonna be looking at that into becoming another neighborhood orchard. It's a, it's a big waste of grass because it's, again, more ornamental grass than, uh, than uh, 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 grass for people to play on. Can you stay there for a second? Is it um, Lee Pollard High School up in the left-hand corner? That's correct. Okay, so that, that chunk of grass there, that belongs to us, right? Yeah, belongs to the Landscape Maintenance District or, CF, or one of the CFDs. I don't know which one right off hand, but okay. it does not belong to the school. Church. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Church. Yeah, the, the church is on the left. On the right, right. that's the right. Pollard is on the left. It's a large waste of grass, is what it is. <laughs> 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 Either way, <laughs> <or> <laughs> <it> <laughs> Get to the point. So then you get down, obviously, Mediterranean themes. So, but all the themes there, so we don't have a monoculture running through the city like grass. We're running multiple themes in multiple areas and, and providing a, a city a, a a varied look. You go on pavers with a more Mediterranean look, and I think you've seen some of the paver areas, and I think the paver areas work out well too. It's another low water, and the pavers also allow for percolation, which is one of our themes here. Is we don't want to put in more concrete. We're putting in stuff to allow uh, percolation of the of the um, of the more, of the rain when it does come it down into the ground. Succulent themes, again, succulent themes, all succulents, and again, succulents are another one that flower periodically throughout the year and can be very attractive, and you see these a lot in the uh, beach communities and down in Orange County. They've done a lot of beautiful stuff with succulents. And then the woodland theme, and that's it. So it would be a series of themes running through the city. The money's all from CFDs and LMDs. It reduces. From a sustainability standpoint, it reduces water usage. Obviously, that helps the LMD and CFD in the long run. It also uh, reduces the maintenance costs and helps both the community from a standpoint of the trees do not start breaking up the concrete. Because these trees, when they grow them in a four foot parkway, they immediately rise up the roots. They just, uh, they just come up to the surface. So that will immediately reduce our in these areas that we're doing, reduce those roots. Some of the roots are already up, but in the future it'll prevent, it'll force the roots down. They'll go after the water that is now down. There, is, there will be no grass watering in that area. You don't get runoff, you don't have the fertilizer runoff. So from an environmental standpoint, you, know, you have to fertilize the grass, you don't have the fertilizer that needs to be applied. It doesn't, you can't effectively water a four foot parkway. You can't effectively fertilize. Anybody's ever tried to fertilize a little four foot parkway? Knows that most of it's either in the street or on the sidewalk. So neither of those are good things. And then you have the grass that's always a problem. You see the guys with the leaf blowers out there trying to get the grass off of the streets and running throughout Corona. It's never an easy thing. And we don't have the leaf blower, we don't have the lawnmower, and we got a lot more hand pruning and cutting. And this also doesn't, all of this landscape also doesn't require the big hedge trimmers. It's mostly hand pruning stuff but still lower cost than the other stuff. So we think it's a good project for, from both a sustainability and a water use standpoint. And I believe it will make the community look a lot nicer. Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Y
question. There is a a triangle, if you will, of land that California and Tabor that has been dirt for at least two years. It will be a, it's got, it's, it's work, we're working on a, 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 I know exactly what you're talking about. Next it's, to the facility for We just, we, have you been by it We just planted, I just went by there yesterday. <coughs> we, we, just planted, we just planted orange trees okay. there. They, they were donated by, they were, they came uh, for excess. When did you do that? Excess. Oh, a couple of weeks ago. When the community had their no, Sunday. No, 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 there was no trees there. No, I guarantee you that piece of land was on its neighbor, right by the church? Yeah, by the church, right across the yeah. Outside California. Yeah, there's, there's trees. Happened. According to uh, it just happened. Yeah. Right I mean, they're not giant trees, but there are. there is a neighborhood <laughs> orchard there. You should have popped up. <laughs> no, 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 they're, they're decent okay, size. While you Maybe I wasn't there. Jonathan <laughs> <planted>. <laughs> so so there, are, there are trees going in there. We're, we're coming back. To okay, council good. for a little bit more funding, we're going to be putting a walkway, a DG walkway through it. Uh, we've recently got a don donation of a windmill, one of the old wind machines from one of the orchards. So we put, we're going to be putting the windmill up there. All the plants so far have been done by helping hands and a community organ, a community help. We're going to be doing more community work out there. Uh, there'll be a little fence. There'll be some. Uh, small tables for chess, checker kinds of setups, not uh, benches and stuff, because we don't want to turn it into a homeless shelter, but, uh, but for ch checkers and chess, small stuff. And the orchard, along with the windmill, the windmill will be also done with volunteer groups. They've already got some groups to renovate the windmill. The windmill was donated from one of the local groves, or lost groves. Uh, <laughs> and. We'll be coming back for some other stuff. We have to obviously add some sidewalks and fencing and some um, uh, other things to the park along with the benches. So we'll be coming back for some funding. But one it's going to be turned into one of our first neighborhood orchards. One of the meetings that you missed, Nancy, they presented it here. So you'll have to bring your own wine, though. And <laughs> um, so and, and, our goal, and, our goal with the and our goal with neighborhood orchards is to get the community groups to come in and do the fruit, pick the fruit. We'll do the maintaining of the thing, and then community groups or in, individuals could come into the grove and take the fruit. Uh, but we'll certainly organize the remaining fruits. That it's going to be that big of an area. There's a lot of trees in that area. There's there's a significant amount of trees, and like on this other one we're proposing on Magnolia, oh. will also be a significant amount of trees. I mean, these trees produce lots of fruit. Anybody that has a lemon tree or a, yeah. a lime tree in their backyard, you will have a, you either have a lot of friends or you have a lot of fruit. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our theme. That's our thing, and uh, it's it's we're working. And there'll be other little ones that pop up like that, turning these like little patches of grass that don't do anything Great. into these awesome. neighborhood orchards, bring the orchards back in the, into the community. Jeff? Yeah. Oh, I had a question, it was exciting. Uh, the architect um, used local guys. Did we did use local guys, yes. Our engineers and, and architects are usually local. I mean, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure Orange County and LA can sustain their architects and engineers. <laughs> Jonas, is there any way to quantify uh, how much or how long it'll take to get a return on our investment? Specifically, what I'm talking about is I live, as everybody knows, I live on the north side of town, and you've already done a lot of this work on River Road. It's absolutely magnificent what you've done. But that's expensive to take out all this existing stuff. And, and put in your foliage. The, 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 the truth is, I mean, yeah, there is expensive prevailing wage, obviously. These are all prevailing wage jobs. But the, the quantification, yeah, you could probably say if we did the real math on it, if you excluded the real benefits of sustainability and the, and the uh, you know, all the reductions in waste and all of that, if you just excluded all of that, you probably have a 15 year payback in there. But in the end of the day, that excludes. The, the damage from the tree roots that excludes the the, 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 weight, the green waste that excludes that excludes the water waste on a continuous basis, uh, the greenhouse gases from the lawn mowers, the fertilizers, the pollution, the guys out in the street blowing the grass all over the place. We've all been down going down in these streets in Corona, where some guys out in the street trying to blow the grass back up to the thing. I, I think, uh, from a sustainability standpoint, I think the paybacks almost immediate and from a community look that doesn't have these long running grass things that are all broken up by roots and everything. I think the payback is very quick and very uh, and very real, but from a, a dollar dollar for dollar standpoint, 
we don't have the exact math, but it's certainly in the, it's above 10 and probably less than 15. Okay, good, thank you. Jonathan, you mentioned the trees. You're not talking about removal of trees. No, no, we're not talking about removal of trees. Uh, one thing we will be doing as we move through these projects as, they, as the landscape stabilizes is going back after the trees have now started to, the roots have started to develop feeder roots down towards the, because the irrigation will be deeper and, 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 and uh, drip irrigated. We'll go back and do some pruning of the roots of the top roots and try and get the trees back down where they need to be. Uh, so that would be, instead of pruning the trees for a couple of years, we'll be pruning the roots along these routes to get the, to help, help, help the tree grow deeper and properly where it was. It'll stabilize the tree too. You'll see healthier trees in the areas along Masters and the other areas we've done. The trees are much healthier looking than, that, than they were uh, with the other grass. They, they are certainly developing the, the, bot, the lower feeder roots that help sustain a tree. You don't see them leaning. Uh, you, you see a healthier, uh, you'll see a healthier tree. The tree was never meant to be in a little four foot parkway and because it's inefficient to water, it gets tons of surface water because if you don't water it, most of the water is going on the sidewalk or going on the, the street. Because it was such, it's such an inefficient thing in a four or five foot parkway. So I think we'll see more stabilized trees in the, in the long run too. We'll see bigger canopies and they'll be much stabler and their roots will be down and a lot less sidewalk damage in the long run, which is good for our community. One, other, standpoint. one other question I have looking down the line. Um, are there plans at Santana Park on the north side where you, there's an embankment that comes down to Ontario and that's grass? Yeah, we've, uh, we've, we've been working with some interns from Cal Poly and uh, we've got, they've done, we'll bring that back to a committee. That's probably a good thing to come back. We'll bring it back to committee of their evaluation of our parks on non-usable grass, non-recreational grass. And they've done a great job of identifying all those areas, including Santana and Citrus and, and uh, many other parks where these little triangles just happen to be and there's absolutely no way. I mean, you could probably, G.I. Joe and, and, and Barbie could hang out at the grass there, but nobody else could. It's just completely useless grass. And those uh, will also have a benefit to the community in the long run, and then we could put this kind of a theme in there. We're gonna be remarrying, reutilizing the same themes, and these uh, intern, this, one intern has done a wonderful job of identifying those areas, using our GIS mapping, which is a great tool. Um, and then just identifying those areas and then we'll bring that back as well and bring it back and obviously it's take us a while it's general funded but yeah, it'll take yeah, us a while yeah. to do it but it also can very easily be done with community groups so that we have had them identified we identify themes that go there and then when community groups or boy scout groups or whomever are looking for projects uh, we can partner with home depot and those kinds of things and just keep working working the problem until it all goes away. Sure. And it, does, sure. it, it definitely does uh, make change the look of the park in, you know, in all our parks. It's just not one, it's throughout the community where there's this non-recreational grass, as we call it. I love how departments use the interns as well. And these are Cal Poly kids, uh, brilliant. And one of the themes we'll be bringing back is a, a reuse. If you notice the freeway has put in um, some rather large under uh, under areas like on, on uh, West Grand there. And one of the themes, and we're, we're working on the grant as well for uh, a grant called Play, e Play Everywhere. Yeah. Play Everywhere, and um, it would be underneath underneath that large area, underneath West Grand would be a playground. And it would be a, it would be a, a a different type of playground, but it would certainly be, it could have a lot of different themes. It could have basketball courts, because it's very high. It's got big columns to hold up nice basketball courts. It could be, it could be a lot of different things. It could be handball courts, because it's got nice walls in there that are, that are nice and flat and long. So it could be a community park there, rather than just have it uh, a homeless thing. And then if you uh, turn it into a park, you obviously have all the park ordinances that go with sleeping in parks. and all of those types of things and so it's just another use of the area you can uh, you can uh, add some walls in there so that you could uh, have some community murals 
So in regards to the, <laughs> to the parks, you, you're looking at not only the landscape aspect and, and making it more water efficient, but also use of other parts of the city through this grant. Right? Yeah, That's Play great. Anywhere is so. just basically, it's, it looks at different ways if you go to some of these areas, they, they, they build these <clears> micro <throat> parks or, or parks where you can play anywhere. And that West Grant just lends itself as we were, as it was becoming bigger and wider and because it just became a, a unique, unique area. Of like tunnel. I mean, and if we don't do something with it, John and I were having this dialogue, it will become an encampment or something else. So at least if we do a park there, um, it serves two purposes. The kids in that area, you know, live near freeways, but they don't have places to play because those are old areas and parks weren't planned until much later. But more importantly, we'll be able to put cameras to it. Hopefully we'll be able to have park ordinances which prevent the sleeping and you could do solar lighting. There's a lot of grants for stuff like that. So solar lighting underneath, so it could be well lit. Lighting could be sustainable. There's a lot of there's a lot of things you could do underneath there. You could then fence it off so the ground is protected. So once you enter the park from either side, uh, both the community would have easy access to it. It's controlled intersections on either side, and uh, we've looked at it from a lot of aspects. There's some grants out there we're applying for. Uh, we're going to be working on others. And we'll bring that theme back as we develop it, but it's it's a, it's a different way of looking at a, a park, but it certainly takes care of ongoing maintenance as well from a graffiti standpoint, from a homeless standpoint, and it turns something that it's should just a deep, dark tunnel into something else. It sure sounds like something you would find in Brooklyn, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It does sound like it's something from Brooklyn. <laughs> no, no, it was a California girl that came up with the idea. So. Really? <laughs> really? Really? You did? I, I did not. Our interns said we kind of came back, you know, Jonathan said, hey, see what you can do with the space. We started looking at it and kind of Googling and stuff. We should see some of the renderings that they came up with, even just some of the hand sketches. Or yeah, we, pretty, we'll, we'll bring those back to the committee. Really interesting okay. stuff. Well, the, reason, the reason I state that is we all know that Jonathan is from Brooklyn, and there's a lot of parks in, in the city mm -hmm. that are just like that. I spent yeah. a lot of time on the freeway, so. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. right. uh, we'll bring those other things back to you uh, as, we, as we move through. Good job, Ben. Any other comment, public comment? Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, on the subject of the GIS map, um, one of the themes that comes up in every single meeting with development or any kind of a zoning change, anything like that, is a lack of notice. Um, I, I would like to propose uh, development anything anything past like a uh, chain link fence in your backyard kind of permit track maps uh, zoning change anything gets tagged and put on the GIS map by the APN or the address number so that somebody can just passively it's there so during this one, two, three year process of hashing a development out that that goes up and then people can look at what's going on in this lot that's behind my house that somebody can just look what's going on around my area what what's proposed in my area I'm going to buy in this area what's there you can just look at the map and it's there it's the, the information is available it's it's public record as soon as you guys write a receipt as soon as somebody writes something that's there don't have to give away any proprietary information. It could just be that, look, there's a proposal to change the zone on this lot that's next to my house. And you could come down and inquire and find out what's available. At least people, the, the neighbors, the people the surrounding area could know what's going on. So uh, the couple people I've mentioned it to said it sounded like something that, that well, that sounds like something Daryl would have come up with. Daryl so, and Jonathan have been working on this. We just recently brought on a new IT guy. Jonathan's I his GIS system is more developed than the city's GIS system. We're merging those together and partnering with Esri going forward. And they have a great app. And it's about spatial GIS databases. So we're gonna be able to lay a lot of data in there. So some of it the public will have access to outward facing and some won't. So we're in development, but we're probably still literally a year or two away from that. Yeah, this app, so rather than reinvent and give you something <laughs> that looks like crap right now, I mean, to be honest with you, the, the, the reality is we'll have this, the, there's a, this outwardly facing app that is just unique, very unique and very easy for you to use on all of your, you know, your portable devices. And it will be able to track lots of stuff. And as our data, as we add the upgrade the software for like uh, planning and, 
and uh, building and all the other stuff, the projects can populate up there just like that where we don't have this clunky little interface and you can just click on yeah. it and drill down in your community and other communities. It's a very, very good app. You can go on the Esri site. It's ESRI is the large Redlands uh, GIS. They're the basically 100,000 pound gorilla in the GIS business. And if you go on their website, you can get a glimpse. They have some demos up there of the, the app. And I guess we could probably put a demo of the future of what's coming. But rather than work backwards, because we have some older, yeah, yeah. We, even our file software doesn't yeah. share well with the new web platform. So we have to get to the web platform and the cloud-based stuff to get more of what you want without spending a lot of money making backwards like compatible stuff. So once we're there, we should, we'll be there in a little while. But he, like he said, we're probably a year out. Uh, we have a great guy on board and we're, we're teaming with some other cities to expedite some of our efforts so we don't re reinvent the wheel or, re or repeat the same mistakes. But it is as coming. The case may be. Huh? Yeah, as the case may be. It, 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 it's coming and it, it will be something that is very much along the lines of what you're saying and much more. So it is coming. Why not? Yeah. I just, I'd, I'd like to play, uh, have a way for people to have a heads up before the cake is already baked, before it goes yeah. to planning committee. You'll see this app will be able to, you'll be able to query it, ask it to re send you alerts about whatever. It's, it's a real deal web-based tool that has been developed by a great company and uh, it'll help us get to where you want to go and where we want to go. Jonathan, what's the estimated cost of that? So the app comes with the software, but we have to get, we have to just work to get our legacy systems right. up. Our files, our shape files are in the wrong format. So everything to do with web has to get into the format that web likes or you create these stop gaps in between. They're very expensive to maintain and very, uh, so you have to create fixes. Rather than create fixes, we update our software, we update our files, which is the, the base maps. You update your files, and then the software we already own, the, the newer versions of it, we just have le some legacy stuff that we have to get there. So the software is already being, is owned and paid for by the city. The web-based stuff is there. We just have to get our legacy <coughs> stuff Get some, and then get some base work done on our stuff. Get some other systems that we're already working on, like, like the uh, the uh, planning and building uh, software stuff. The newer software that is web based and communicates effectively with GIS tools. Our asset management in the in the water system is our new asset management system is already in progress. It is web based and and uh, GIS centric everything that is horizontal and, and and to some degree the vertical stuff like our treatment plants they are developing a 3d vertical setup so that you could see the upgrades to vertical as well as horizontal uh, uh, so i'm going to bring you back that's. to my question it's hard to say though he's <laughs> he 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 giving a lot of information <laughs> no it's not it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot the money's not pieces, but it's ultimately <coughs> a few hundred thousand dollars away from that solution because it, it touches the new website that will go live this year. It touches Jonathan's side of the house, which is more upgraded than this side of the house. The shape files are the big one. The shape files are, are basically old at this point in time, so it, it it's I can't just say that GIS is going to cost you hundred eighty three thousand dollars. It touches a bunch of other things too, but let's yeah, just leave it at a few hundred thousand dollars to turn that corner and tie them all back together again, and then start embedding them in the city of Corona app, the new website. So then we have to sort of delineate some of that for acts of terrorism and other things. We don't necessarily want the public to have all the data on Jonathan's water, wastewater, treatment facility data. Mm. That's this side of the firewall. So then you have to get into or layers of police and stuff. There's lots right. of layers in GIS. Yeah. Yeah. So there's it's, lots of it's easy conceptually. <clears throat> what Joe's asking about, we're in development on. Um, if you go to Rancho yeah. Cucamonga's website yeah. and look at their what they have going on with their it's Esri web, place. it's close to what we'll have. And I'm not down. saying asking that because I'm opposed to it. I'm just curious as to there's money involved, but there's also money being already yeah. spent on other areas. So we're working yeah. towards there, we'll we we multiple links. Security side as well, not only that side of the firewall, but the other, because um, as I'm learning and from other avenues, $15 can shut down a whole agency. You can spend that, have the company send something to screw your whole system on. Yeah. So 
So, anyway. Thank you. Okay, well, anything else? Anything else? Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you.